Good Thursday afternoon and thanks for joining us. I'm Jeremy Taylor and here's what we have coming up for you at your news at noon. For closing arguments held in former President Trump's civil fraud trial in New York. More with legal implications of what Trump is saying. Plus reactions from the governor's mansion comes as the Arkansas Corrections Board votes to remove Joe Porfiri as the Secretary of Corrections. And more Arkansans are falling victim to AI real estate scams. In seven minutes, a few tips on what to do if this was to happen to you. But first we have a look at weather and don't be deceived by the beautiful day today. We have a lot to talk about. I'm going to send it straight over to meteorologist Nathan Scott. Nathan, what is happening? Good afternoon, Journey. If you look behind you, you saw those clouds looming on the horizon. Our view 11 is facing down to the south and we got some low clouds that tells us Things are about to change. Warm, humid air is trying to build its way in here from the south. We're at 57 already in Little Rock, 52 in Hot Springs, 52 in Clinton, 60 right now in Monticello. Those winds moving in from the south southeast about 10 to 15 miles per hour. They will pick up through the course of the day and into tonight ahead of a strong Arctic front. The clashing of the air masses. We've got some wind dynamics in place, so we do have to watch out for the potential of strong to severe thunderstorms. Three out of five risk of severe weather in southwest Arkansas under the orange zone that includes hot springs, Arkadelphia, Texarkana, but as close as Benton, I would say, but really everybody in Arkansas needs to be on their guard later tonight and early Friday morning for the potential of severe weather. I'll tell you right now, there is the chance of tornadoes. I'll get more into that risk coming up a little bit later, but there you see the chance of showers on the increase this evening. And as we go into tonight, showers and thunderstorms will blossom across the area and some of these storms could turn ugly if they reach their maximum potential. Once the front makes its way through, look what happens. 58 degrees, 5 o'clock in the morning, temperatures come crashing down. Noon will be into the low 30s, but with gusty winds, it's going to feel like the 20s. And that's just a taste of what is to come later in the weekend and for early next week. More on that. Coming up. All right, Nathan. Well, with Arctic air on the way, there are things to remember when it comes to protecting your home. A dreaded pipe burst could be an experience in a headache. That's why plumbers encourage you to put those outside faucet covers on now and make sure to run the faucets inside your home as the below freezing temperatures move in. Plumber Aaron Jackson says he even recommends a small stream instead of a drip to make sure the water doesn't freeze inside the pipes. Now another tip, leave your cabinets open under the sink to let the heat inside. A lot of times what we see, people will turn their cold water on and, um, and the hot side will freeze and bust. That's why both are important. Jackson says sinks along outside walls are a priority, priority when it comes to leaving faucets on. Now, other things you can do to protect your home and avoid frozen pipes. Make sure to remove hoses from nozzles outside and fix or replace weather stripping when needed. For example, around plumbing and electrical or gas lines. You can also use insulation to seal all cracks or holes on exterior walls. Wrap vulnerable pipes with pipe insulation and know where your water shutoff valve, valve is in case you need to turn the water off in an emergency. In developing news, the New York civil fraud trial against former Donald Trump is winding down after more than three months of testimony in Lower Manhattan. Bradley Blackburn has the latest from the courthouse. Closing arguments are underway in former President Donald Trump's civil fraud trial. He talked to reporters before heading into the courtroom. As you know, I want to speak. I want to make the summation. At this moment, the judge is not letting me make the summation because I'll bring up things that he doesn't want to hear. Trump made a last minute request to deliver part of the closing arguments himself, but Judge Arthur and Goron ruled against it when the two sides could not agree to terms. If he can make the closing argument, he's testifying, but not under oath. Mm -hmm. And he can commit perjury and fraud. You can't do anything about it. Trump and his organization are accused of tax fraud to get better loan terms or lower taxes on properties. Charges that the front runner for the Republican presidential nomination has repeatedly claimed are politically motivated. It's election interference at the highest level. It's a disgrace. Here at the courthouse in New York, security is a little tighter today following a bomb threat made this morning at the judge's home. 
This is the 10th time Trump has appeared in court since the civil trial began. Back in November, he took the stand in his own defense, clashing with prosecutors and the judge when he refused to answer questions with a simple yes or no. At one point, the judge threatened to remove Trump from the witness stand due to his outbursts. That day, New York Attorney General Letitia James said Trump's distractions can't hide the truth. The only thing that matters are the facts and the numbers. And numbers, my friends, don't lie. In addition to the civil case, Trump faces 91 criminal counts in four different cases. He has pleaded not guilty in all those cases. Bradley Blackburn, CBS News, New York. In politics, former President Trump held his own separate event while Florida Governor Ron DeSantis and Nikki Haley went head to head in last night's debate. Haley and DeSantis spent a lot of their time calling each other liars and losers, then attacking the front runner. Meanwhile, Trump mostly dodged direct attacks at his competing town hall nearby in Iowa, hinting for the first time last night that he has picked a vice presidential running mate where he joked about a Trump Christie ticket just hours after the former New Jersey governor ended his White House bid. Well, I can't tell you that really. I mean, I know who it's going to be. Christie for vice president. You know, Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to announce. Well, Christie explicitly campaigned to block Trump, frequently calling out other rivals for failing to more forcefully denounce him. The Haley campaign believes Christie's exit helps her in New Hampshire, where a recent poll has her just single digits behind Trump. In a THV 11 update, the Arkansas Board of Corrections fires prison secretary Joe Proferi. The decision comes after a prison board meeting where the focus was solely whether to keep Proferi suspended, allow him back or allow him back to come back to work or fire him. The vote came down five to two to remove Proferi from the position. Now, the governor responded to the board's decision, saying in part, quote, sadly, the Board of Corrections has chosen repeatedly to focus on pushing lies, political stunts and power grabs. During ongoing litigation, Joe Profiri will be serving as a senior advisor to me in my office. Profiri also responded in a statement saying it's disappointing to see politics being played with the safety and security of Arkansans. Certain members of the board are making false and misleading claims all in an effort to hold power and keep the status quo, which for decades has created a dangerous and broken system. And quote, now the full statements from both Profiri and Governor Sanders can be found on our website, THV11.com. Mortgage rates for homes have gone down, but the fear of purchasing one over the phone or online has gone up for home buyers. In Arkansas, more people are falling victims to artificial intelligence scams, specifically in real estate. Kara Carlin with the Better Business Bureau says AI scams are advancing with things like fake listings, generated conversations, and even voice impersonations of property owners. Now she's warning those who fall victim to AI often do because the technology can create lifelike listings, but there are things to look out for. There's not a whole lot of red flags, unfortunately, but some of the things that scammers do that you can pick up on, especially in this space, um, high pressured sales, rush transactions, um, a reluctance from the owner or the agent to meet in person. If you or someone you know comes across an AI scam, you're asked to report it to police, the attorney general or the Better Business Bureau. They actually have an online scam tracker. Happening today, the last public meeting is being held for a project to make Central Arkansas safer. The Regional Comprehensive Safety Action Plan will impact Pulaski, Lone Oak, Saline, and Faulkner counties. Tonight, officials are seeking public input on dangerous roadways. The meeting is from 5.30 to 7 o'clock in Little Rock at the Southwest Community Center. And also today, Little Rock Police will give an update on its efforts to stop crime. The department is holding its quarterly meeting at 12th Street Station. They will have new statistics pertaining to the 12th Street in downtown Little Rock area. LRPD is encouraging the public to come out and give them feedback to help them identify ways that they could improve. And that starts at 6 o'clock. Well, a new round of storms is hammering the country. Coming up, we take a look at a popular ski resort near Lake Tahoe, temporarily shut down following an avalanche. Nathan?
And we have clouds moving in from the south. Chance of showers goes up this evening and watch out for the potential of strong to severe thunderstorms arriving through the overnight hours while you are sleeping. More details on that severe weather potential, the threats and also talking about potential of a winter storm later in the seven day coming up.